Right. Make there's some technical difficulties. We're gonna I'm gonna call the Parks Recreation Committee to order for Monday, May 20th. All right. Committee member Jed Henry. Here. Committee member Emily Spahn. Here. Committee member Jennifer Bonte via Zoom. Here. And trustee Cody Bratton. Here. Right, moving to public comment. There's no one on the line. I'm assuming he's for. Yep. Okay. Correct. But do you have any public comment? I didn't figure as much. Um, go to reports. I do not have any as I've been kind of absent the last meeting. So excited to get filled in on what's going on. Do any of the members have any reports, updates? Do you want me to report something? Jen, do you have anything? Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know if others had noticed this, but, um, you know, last time we met with the Lions Legacy Project, um, and and I just wanted to comment that I think they really elevated their game and their presentation and their project plan, and I saw their website that had... Um, maybe it was posted online or or it was um maybe it was even you know pushed out in like a campaign style but they have a really good website about their concept and about how you could support it and um in a gallery and um anyway i just wanted to say how well i think it's uh, how well i think that they've done um you know trying to push this initiative so that's it but i agree Second yeah that. All right, Mike, what have you got? All right, I just have a few things for you. Um, Parks-wise, obviously our parks and open space plan is out and people are look, we're looking for feedback from people in regards to any parks, trails, conservancies, open space, anything kind of around the village. The topic that we have tonight is actually something that we'll talk about being added to our new parks and open space plan. Uh, we attended the village hall annual meeting. Um, I'd say it was a decent showing, but you know, in general, it was a lot of the people that were just there with tables. Uh, and then there was probably like 12 to 15 people there to like listen to the actual meeting. Uh, but we did pick up about 17 or so people to like provide us feedback in regards to the parks and open space plan and also the um, the pool placement as well. So uh, and then we went to Trout Days and we set up a booth at Trout Days as well so that people could give us feedback. Um we have everything on the website for the parks and open space plan, and also what we'll talk here next with the pool feasibility plan. Uh, mm -hmm. They're all on the website. We're, we're, we are getting people clicking on it. Uh, right now we have 57 responses for the parks and open space plan, and we have 136 votes uh, for where the pool uh, should be located next. So that's decent. I'd like to do a push. You know, we're, we're trying to put stuff in the newsletter. Uh, we'll also have this at the pool for people to, you know, be able to vote on uh, up until June 16th. So far with those 136 for the pool feasibility, about 80% of those are at the new location at Bear Park. So right now it's very tilted in, in one direction. And the previous one was like 60%, right? Yeah, yep. <laughs> so overall though, getting good feedback. Uh, feedback, not only just for like where the pool should be located, but even giving some good feedback on, on why. And if, you know, if it were to be moved, they really do love the concept of other, you know, of what could be on the current site. So that's good. Um, let's see. Back onto parks a little bit. Um, we had the Melody Acres visioning session. Thank you, Emily, for coming to the visioning session. That was great. Uh, we had eight signed in on the sheet. Uh, we had roughly 17 or so. So some kids came as well. Obviously, they weren't signing in on those things, but received some good feedback for about an hour and 15 minutes or so of, you know, location and different equipment um, points of emphasis within that. And then I'll compile all that information. There are some people that were going to take it home and send it back. I haven't received them from them, but we have received some information about what they'd really like to see. Uh, and then what what I'll do is compile that information 
put out an RFP to the playground manufacturers and we'll bring three of them or so back uh, to our meeting in July is the thought process right now. So it'll be kind of some time, but what's that time frame from like visioning to Yeah, it, it really, it may be early spring next year. It'll really depend on who we get right now. They were 36 weeks out for installation. Now that was one of the companies. That's the one that we used uh, behind Jed's house there. However, if we were to do a community build, which would save a ton of money, uh, that could be pushed up a little bit, but it, they weren't, you know, anywhere from, depending on what you get for equipment, you're looking at probably about 10 to 15 weeks out for any equipment too. So, um, staff is hired for the summer, pretty much everyone. We do have one opening in parks maintenance right now. So if anyone knows of anybody, they have to be 18 years old, um, but it's outside work and for the most part, pretty fun. They get to work with uh, Hayden Hellenbrand this year as he is back with us uh, for a summer. Um, but outside of that, we pretty much have everyone hired and our staff trainings have started. We had a staff training last week for rec and we have one on Saturday and Sunday for the pool. So nothing like getting up to the deadline for the pool, but I wasn't able to fill the pool until today. So the pool is filled and it's uh, the pumps are all started right now we have a pretty good leak in our flute which is where your um it's like right in between your motor and your pump so um there's a leak in there so i'm waiting to see if it kind of seals itself up sometimes it happens if not i'll have to get a new gasket and try and replace that at some point we can shut it down there's a lot of water on the floor right now i don't know if it's necessarily from just from that it looked like the heaters may be leaking a little bit too but they normally will leak into the pipes to the heaters until it gets warm so it's real cold water right now um it's like 59 traction it's like 59 degrees the water so it's pretty chilly uh, but overall you know shout out to public works department and dane although dane did call in sick on me so i spent about seven hours tiling the pool which i haven't done in 10 years probably and scrubbing the floor oh scrub the floors the bathrooms look great uh you were hopefully you go in there and you're like holy cow i didn't even know they could look this nice because that's what we did we we put a lot of time and effort into it so um shout out to those guys for all their help and that's i mean that's about it we obviously start up uh, the pool or the memorial day is our opening day so between tomorrow and monday there's Still quite a bit to do just to kind of get ready for patrons to be in the water. Um, a lot of chemicals being added and um, and we need to figure out how these filters all work. <laughs> Still have a lot of kind of questions within that. Oh, so, the new filter set? Yeah. It's a lot different. There's a lot more valves to close and open. And, oh, really? Yeah. So I think I have a good understanding of it so far after today, but to like be able to teach staff never to turn this valve or if you have an issue you know it's here so i have to write all that up again so that's it any questions so the shooting will be open monday yeah i mean we haven't it might be cold we haven't not been open on memorial day yet so i hope hope that doesn't start now but yeah as of right now everything looked good uh i mean interesting enough usually when we fill the pool and start the pump and everything kind of starts running. We get a lot of air in there. This time we have filters that have never had water in them and we didn't have much. We had a little bit of air to start, but then we didn't have the little specks of air that come out. And that's what we're usually getting before. So that's a good sign. And normally that's air before the pump. So, you know, maybe this helps seal that up a little bit or, you know, deafening in a little bit. So looks good. Glad to hear it because I walked by the other day and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I received a number of emails from people like, hey, Laura Mardig was one like walked by the pool the other day. So it wasn't filled yet. What's going on? Is there a big problem? And I was like, nope, just have there was a lot of tile. I mean, I bet you we I mean, I'll, I'll I should do pictures and put them up um, or email them to you all because I bet you we did. 200 like one by one tiles oh, really? in blue and we probably did. 100 white and then mosaic as well so and then we had to grout all those then we had to plaster around the outside of them and uh yeah it was it's it's intense so but it's done 
we'll see how long the uh, new tiles stay on. Usually they tend to pop because there's just not a lot of concrete back. We did do a new expansion joint and I added a bunch of uh, concrete additive. It's like a, it was like a, they had it done at the hardware store. I'm like, I'm just going to try this because a lot of the tiles where they break off, we don't have any concrete behind them. So any little bit of water gets in there, it just pops them right away. So I'm hoping maybe this will hold a little bit better. But it's worth a shot. Yeah, we'll see. That's that. Right. So we'll move into the, into the discussion. Um, discussion and possible action to approve the minutes of April 15th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from last month. I will second. <laughs> all right. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I read through them all, so I'm on, I'm on board. Um, you're up to speak. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. <clears throat> motion carries. Uh, discussion and possible action regarding the expansion of bike optimized multi use trails within village open space. Yeah, so I left this very generic uh, because we don't have names quite yet for all the conservancies that this is being uh, labeled or what, what is being brought to us tonight. But uh, Ron Nutowski's in uh, attendance here tonight. Ron is the assistant maintenance or assistant uh, trail steward for the Cross Plains uh, Driftless Downs here in Cross Plains for Corp. Um, Ron was uh, a big part and reason why the first edition of Driftless Downs was approved and accepted within the village. And even though it says assistant, I would say Ron's probably the trail steward uh, for that as he's out there nightly, weekly, uh, always out there kind of doing different maintenance. So he's very passionate about this uh, and he'd love to see us uh, add some, obviously what you'll see tonight, but you'll uh, add some more trail, uh, add a, a, a um, trailhead with that and then possibly even a pump track so ron the floor is yours if you'd like to uh come and address them you can come and sit up at the table if you'd like and push on one of the mics so jen can hear you yeah that's that's good yeah. uh like mike said my name is ron knutowski i live on gills way um i've been an active mountain biker for a long time um and we've been working with the village now for i think eight years mike is that right i think somewhere uh, around there um and, and we put in the driftless downs area we ha did have a few um we did we did you know have some naysayers at first um and i think we've proved that we were very capable to put in you know good quality trail that lots of users could use um we have a lot of snowshoers hikers um, fat bikers, regular mountain biking, obviously. Um, and we are affili affiliated with the Capital Off-Road Pathfinders Court for short. Um, the name is a little confusing. So uh, the website is madcitydirt.com if you're not familiar. Um, but that's where all of the Dane County and surrounding areas, um, all the trail information is there. Um, Corp is a growing um, entity. Um, we're working with clubs in Baraboo, as well as trying to work out in uh, places like Dodgeville. Um, and the club is active in New Glarus State Park as well currently. That's a new, a new op opportunity. Um, the club is very uh, open and trying to get more connections, small hubs. We have a lot of small trail systems, kind of like our trail here in Cross Plains, um, which is really um, trying to get people to you know, move around more, do more things. Um, the big thing is trying to get connections to places like Black Earth, Mazo, Middleton. Um, and, and we're really working towards, you know, doing more of those things. And I know the village wants um, trails. Um, so that's kind of why we're here. Um, we have a new um, conservancy area. I don't, I think I've referred to it as whatever the subdivision name is now uh, in the proposal, yeah. um, which I don't even remember. Scenic Valley. Scenic Valley. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, so that's what I've referred to it as Scenic Valley. I don't know what the name of the conservancy will be, um, but that's where we're proposing um, pu putting in some additional mileage of trails, um, trying to make them even more beginner friendly than the current trail system. Um, sometimes these spaces, steep hillsides that we do have available to use 
make it a little challenging, but um, this would really be geared towards beginner and and maybe you know intermediate trail um, as well as a skills area, hopefully more of a hard surface area that we're looking to build along the current paved path um, along KP there. Um, there's a large section of, of very flat land and that would be um, built to uh, also accommodate adaptive bicyclists. Um, so wider um, and yeah, you got it there, Mike. Um, these are just some kind of Conceptual plans um, near Aldo Leopold School in Madison, they have a hard surface trail system um, that's really built for beginners. Um, and it's very popular. They've actually had to close it recently because they're putting in some new um, grass in, in between it right now. So they're trying to do some remediation, I think, since it was built. Um, but that's a very popular area. Um, and it can be accessed from kind of anywhere. So that's that red that red space there, there's a trail, a path trail right, right there. So that would be very accessible to many different users. And then the yellow trail um, lines there are kind of just a conceptual plan of, of some trails that would be up in the hillside there. Long, I'm not sure the road names there. Uh, that's KP and then Rocky Dell. Ro Rocky Dell. Or is it Court? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I think one of the other things that we kind of have in the proposal there is, is trying to build a more um, more of a trailhead. So, you know, somewhere that people can come look at a map. Maybe we have a, a tool fixing station there, um, kind of like you see here, that, that blue area there. Um, over here, I think it's hard to see in there, but it's, it's, it's tools to like fix your bike or a place to like, you know, have a have a picnic table, something like that. Um, right, right there in that in that open space along the, the path there. So he's kind of talking. I don't know if you can see the grips or but like, yeah, it's a little bit this area yeah there or yeah yeah a little yeah. closer to the pen yeah um uh, another another thing that we were proposing here is um having having some access off of this road here for the local residents that they can also access the path without having to um come all the way up to KP. So there would be um, off that, I don't know the name of that road either, I apologize, um, off of that cul-de-sac there. Yeah, I don't know what that one is either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all new. Yeah. And, it's... and and so this this would not connect to the existing uh, trail, right? This is um, just kind of down KP from there. Yeah, right. so it connects on the paved path that's that's along KP, but not um, right. through the woods or anything like that. There okay. isn't um, enough village property currently, or or landowners willing to to connect that. I think yeah. the goal for the village with the village loop trail. I don't know if that could be done through. Could be some, uh, you know, multiple land owners, or if the village is trying to buy that, or if that's a conceptual plan. But um, this would be. I guess, you know, along that outside perimeter currently. Yeah, okay, thanks. What's the distance of the connection point on the base path? Um, I would guess it's a half mile or less. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Um, what about, like, can you park on the, like, I mean, all the people who live in town are just riding there? Yeah. Is this the idea that it would be a destination and then are people allowed to park on those streets or what's the whole the parking situation be? I think the current area allows parking. We as a club are promoting people to park at the village uh, lots off of Main Street there. Um, that's where, you know, we try to let people park or along um, Bourbon. I know in the past, you know, that because it is a residential area and I, I can respect that because I live I live on Gill's Way. Um, 
is is trying to yeah i think having that path along there is is a very good part of that and my thought is having the you know people continue to park in the village lots which i guess does increase that distance a bit um but it's probably a mile i could just see people in that neighborhood yeah asking about that so yeah no i i do appreciate that that sentiment because i think you know, there isn't a parking lot there. Yeah. And Bourbon's not far. Like what is was... that distance there, Mike? It's about 1,800 linear feet, so it's about a quarter of a mile. mile. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking maybe a mile from the village. Yeah. Public lots over off of Main Street there, or, you know, maybe a half mile from, from Bourbon. Um, yeah. And this... This is a private road. If I have a drive up through here, just so everyone understands that. Um, right now, everybody is parking on Bourbon Road, I'd say. Or not, maybe not everyone, but there's most. There'll be most five or so cars, I feel like, parked kind of towards the end or toward, you know, down here. And you can tell they have their bikes on there. So kind of run out. So it's, it is still pretty close. And I will say, you know, prior to this development coming to the village, so even during discussions for conceptual or preliminary platting of this this was kind of one of the reasons we really wanted these this conservancy area around the outside uh as ron and mike cliff at the time were very adamant about like okay how can we how can we add this in and the nice thing about this is like can we add it or get things kind of started before a ton of the houses are in place although right now there's quite a few going up in phase two back there um so like the trails are already established in there before homes are because we know that yeah. Yeah, a lot of the in a lot of the um a lot of people that were against it were they wanted it they just don't want it in their backyard and we tend to get that all the time uh, we, like the dog park. yeah it's just kind of like the dog park it's kind of like anything you look at the pool or you look at anything everyone's like oh I, we'd love to have one let's not put it in my backyard kind of thing so you know getting this kind of started and discussed early on in this development phase is kind of important I agree. And it is something I, that, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jen. No, I, I was just going to say, I agree. If I bought a home and it was, you know, the back was to a conservancy and then you came in and said, and now we're going to put a mountain bike trail. And I'm like, well, I wasn't expecting that, but you know, so anyway, I was just yeah. saying, I appreciate where you're at. Yeah. With, we're talking about this. That's it. I've kind of been through that though. Like we, we bought the house, the Ice Age Trail was in talks and then it came and it was like oh where are all these people oh, okay cool whatever yeah and i think that's people what's happened people predominantly stay on the trail right like they don't they can go in the conservancy anytime they want it's public land but they're going to stay on the trail especially bikes they're not going to just bushwhack um, <laughs> that's what we found i know um in the current trail system there's private property at the top and I know Mike has talked to the, the landowner and the people that are not supposed to be up there are, are predominantly hikers because there's, it's easy to just walk through, right? And yeah. bike, bikes are going to stay on the trail. And I think most people do. And I don't think people have a problem with it. No, it's just when, you know, like the one bad incident happens, it puts like a bad yeah. vibe on the whole thing. Absolutely. I agree. I have another question, Mike. So that's a private. So that's a private road. I'm looking at the picture, yep. but it's okay for the bikes to cross it to get from like one side to the other. Yeah, so we have an easement along there. Okay. Uh, and that's something else why we put in there. Uh, that's why we, when we were picking up these, uh, pr the property for the conservancy aspect, that was one thing that we requested. So that's what I mean. Like we already kind of had the talks in, you know, in line. Uh, even with the developer to like make sure that we could do this. The other thing that they've done is they've really filled. So I don't know if you were ever in the quarry area before, but they have really filled this in um, as of late. I mean, the last like six months or so, it used to be very steep drop offs. And so right away, I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this idea or adding more trail up along there. Kind of want to keep people away. And I knew that they were filling it in. I just didn't know how long it would take. And now, I mean, there aren't any walls really showing except maybe towards this bottom portion of it, like down in here where there aren't any trails being 
Well, I was kind of wondering because I saw trucks going into the quarry with material. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah. Um, that's not how that normally works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of fill. So they took all the material out, all the good material out to build their roads and kind of build up some of the, the, the plat, some of the land. And then knowing that they were going to have to fill it because you can't leave a quarry uh, open like that either. So you, at some point you always have to fill them in. But south of that, so this area is all owned by Wingra, and that is still a quarry. So you will see trucks going in and out of there still and blasting every once in a while. Right, Ron? I think they own like two forty oh, yeah. parcels to the south. Yeah, too. yeah, they own all of this, like, like down to here. Yeah, yeah, they own this too. So they own these three for sure. And so this this land is part of the subdivisions conservative area that they're basically giving correct and i assume because of the nature of it there's really not much else to do with that right yeah i mean it's over the years woody... been trails you know even prior to mountain biking coming in place we had a lot of walking trails right like throughout these spaces and um and to be honest with you we've with how well that corp and or these stewards uh, have been working on the mountain biking. There's a lot of walkers up hung or hikers up on that trail as well. And it works pretty well having both of them together, which, you know, we haven't had any issues or any calls or incidents or anything like that to date. So it's been a pretty good, pretty good working system. And the, the land is, has no other real value other right. than outdoor yeah. entertainment. Yeah, there isn't, uh, it's actually, It'd be more for passive land is there's not a whole lot of there you can put uh you know soccer fields on this <laughs> um it's a good use of of the property in general and you know just from my standpoint um you know i've worked closely with ice age trail they've been great they have a, a lot of volunteers you know they'll have 200 plus volunteers come out on a work day which is great uh but I've been very, I've been really impressed with the mountain biking group in Cross Plains uh, with all their work days, but like what they're actually able to accomplish in such short time. So I would actually recommend that any of you get a chance, just go out on the current trail, even just walk out the first mile and you're going to be like, wow. I mean, just some of the stones that they've moved and, you know, they've done a really good job at, at keeping it not only building trail, but building sustainable trail. So we have all these big rainouts and things that are happened. And really there hasn't been areas that have rained out um, or washed out in those areas. So I've been very happy with what they've been able to accomplish and their group in general has been awesome to work with. So. So it sounds like this is a good idea. How does it get paid for? Great question. Um, the previous trail system court funded a hundred percent of the bill. I think we're looking to fundraise uh, for sure for professional build for the adaptive skills area because that's a high visibility. We want that to be built right the first time. Um, so we're trying to, you know, work through grants. Um, I don't think we have the full, we don't have the funding currently. Um, so we have to do fundraising. Um, we are asking the village if there's assistance that they can provide as well through grants for additional funding to help with that portion and maybe the trailhead. Um, the additional mileage is definitely something that volunteer build can do and our club is fully, uh, I don't want to say this, fully able to financially provide funding if it's volunteer built. Um, we, we can build pretty quickly, um, renting some machinery and then using volunteers to, to build it for relatively low cost. The biggest cost is really coming into professional trail builders um, and then the materials that they use to make them. If it's hard surface. Sometimes <clears throat> some of these, um, if you ever get a chance, the new CXC Center in Middleton, uh, they have a fully paved pump track. Um, so this is kind of a little bit I mean, with BMX, it's kind of like that. There's big rollers and big burns and it's paved um, and it's phenomenal, but high dollar value um so definitely need to uh work on on fundraising as well as any any other additional funds we can get um either private or public 
The other thing I saw is you guys have a MOU with a village that I think expires next year. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a three year. I thought it was five year. I thought it's what I saw because I think it was 2020. I thought it said five years. But regardless, I guess the question is, is I mean, have, have there been discussion and is that going to continue if they're going to do the work? It sure be nice that. Yeah, it has on. continued. We've updated it once already. Yeah, I think the first one was uh, like a trial period. Yeah, I think that was a three-year one. Yeah. And then no, after five. that, it went to five. Yeah. So I think we were doing every five years. The yeah. the club lawyer, I think, worked that out with the village. I I kind of tried to stay out of it a little bit. Um, but I think in the past, we haven't had any any major concerns with the, the village. hasn't had any concerns with that. Um, I thought I had it in here. Did I not? Yeah, it's towards the it's towards the bottom there. It was you just passed it, I think. Because we would definitely want to include any new um, trail system and then capture that within the new MOU or or revised document. There it was, but maybe it was, unless it's at the very. I just I remember I saw Jay's signature. So, yeah, so twenty twenty. Yep. So yeah, the first one was three years, and then this one was five. So yeah, twenty five. It would be updated. Yeah. And mainly that's just a time what we did last time is just went over all of like the things that the village were to do and the things that the club were to do. And were we still doing those things? Yes or no, or, you know, where we were, what are some changes that we'd want to make? So what my idea or what I put in, put in uh, our document for tonight was this would be a good time for us to probably just open that up again and provide some updates to this on this new section if, if well and i think if we're doing another section it would be nice to extend this so that right you know everybody has that you know if you're going to go do all the work yeah. i think you'd like to have another five-year commitment before you go and do it and then oh like, yeah oh, well this doesn't work for us so yeah. yeah and i think and just like we've done with like the lions club and others but these types of agreements can be you know where we even put some funding if possible or discussion of funding or grants we put it all in here in case anyone or all of us are done they're no longer doing it ron's still trying to do it it kind of he can always point back to this to be like hey this is where where we're at so that's what i was gonna say is we should update this you know if the committee agrees to this idea this conceptual idea uh we can open this back up with our attorney and or ron and i can sit down and kind of talk about what they're really wanting from the village and we can kind of negotiate back and forth on it this is my thought process that's how we did it last time yeah so is there a phase approach to this if possible i know the big concern to me with with what we deal with is with all this discussion of a pool and how the hell we're going to afford a pool you know to add other things in you know scares me i don't yeah. obviously make the decisions at the end of the day so i know that will be a consideration is there and I know that you guys would probably like to get started on this. Is there a, a big chunk of it that can be done with existing resources? So the like uh, the, the additional mileage portion, that's the part that I know our club is able to fund pretty quickly, especially with volunteers. Um, the other part that would definitely likely be phased until we have enough money generated to hire and plan for the, the full build out of, of that skills area in the front there. I mean, I would look to Mike, too, to have a lot of input in terms of, I mean, you can make these things as pretty as you want. It could be a, an art project for all intents and purposes. There's a um, there's a lot of trails that are built down in, in Bentonville, Arkansas, of all places. If you, if you know, um, the, the Waltons of Walmart are mountain bikers, and they funded hundreds of miles of trails through their city, um, and they build actual art projects of in, into the trails they make bridges that have bike parts and they they just they make it a, a something more than just a bike trail um so you could definitely do that in that area with you know landscaping you know as intricate as we can fund for um so i definitely think that would be that that's going to be the, the limiting factors it's like you you're concerned as well funding and being able to complete it so i think that part would probably be a a lagging, delayed um, portion because that would be require more funding. Yeah, I think I'd, ideally the additional mileage for the single track would be added over the next year, two, yeah. um, and then throughout that time there'd just be a capital fundraising 
plan uh, put together. Obviously, I think something like this would actually score pretty well uh, within the park grant, uh, but also could score pretty high in some of the DNR grants as well for trail, uh, adding adaptive trails for kids. It's kind of important. So, so the trails that you have <clears throat> in red and green here, mm -hmm. is that like pretty solid? That's where they're going to be, or is that are you open to? This is pretty much a conceptual plan that I used. Uh, like, did you walk the ground? I walked it. Yes. Okay. Um, it, it's, you know, it, would it be right there on GPS? Definitely not. Would those exact right. turns be there? No. I mean, that's kind of freehand on that on that app there that Mike did with. Yeah. Um, but that's just kind of a conceptual plan. Is that probably kind of close? Probably. Yeah. Given yeah. the given the yeah. property you're working yeah. with. Yeah. There's. I mean, and it's not a large space, so you know, if there's. Yeah, I was just curious. A lot that. of restrictions in like where we go. It it may make it not possible. I think I don't remember the exact acreage in some of those. I mean that that one is hard because a large portion of that is probably because I love like what you're talking about like, the pump thing. Yeah. So I actually drove by that place to help at Leopold School. Yeah. And I was like, oh, look at that! Like, what what is this? And yeah. Then, and when I came back by, there were like eight kids out there pumping away on a bike. Yeah. And I think you get like a lot of visibility right along KP and you're offset yeah. from the road far enough. Like, and let's face it, there's a lot of families in that neighborhood. And oh, I, yeah. Well, and the, the fact that there's a paved path there makes it great too because they don't right. have to ride on the road. Right. Yeah. So this is just kind of shows you the steep slopes. Yeah. Um, there's obviously some nice flat areas. So as the lines get closer together, that's where it gets steeper. Steep. So, you know, you kind of, and I don't know how to do this as well, but Ron and them have built it on the other. So I can show you that on the current site. This is what the current site looked like uh, when they were building out on this. So as you can see, kind of where the entrance area is here, yeah, it's not too bad. The lines are actually pretty good distance yeah. away, but as you keep going, those lines are pretty close together, you know, shooting all the way down. Yeah, we pretty much hug the property line on, yeah. on both sides. So they're there. kind of up on top up here. And that's probably what will have to be done here too, but. I've never been on that part in there. Yeah, we should make our, one of our meetings out there maybe. I've blocked it. Yeah. My son was there once. He crashed hard. Yeah, can't figure out how you ride your bike. I'm like, how do people <laughs> ride their bikes up this? Like, it's... <laughs> I actually got stuck in one of those rabbit holes watching mountain biking where they're like on the peaks of like mountains. And I was like, you, you guys are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you have a Ron's parachute? Anthem. Do you have a parachute on in case you go off of it? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. Like, <clears throat> any type of support. But again, like financially, I don't know. Uh, speaking of that, do you have any sense of economic impact as far as what the mountain bikers bring in? I know that's always a consideration. It's, I mean, if it's, if it's generating revenue or bringing people to the village, that always helps. Yeah, I know in the old plan, we had some of that um, mm -hmm. in our plan. I don't have any actual data. I know people that come here, they all stop at the coffee shop. They all stop at the bar. They all stop at Quick Trip. Like, there's... Any given time, there's bikes outside of some business in town here. Do I have an actual number? No, I, I don't. And I know we can maybe find some numbers out there in the in the in the on the internet to support that. Company. I mean, I think that's hard. I mean, I think yeah. more or less. I guess the thought would be to have seeing if you can get some of those businesses that are impacted to you know see if you can get them to support it i mean i think that's it's hard for people to see or visualize or even get those numbers but if some of the businesses are saying hey you know i'm seeing a lot of these guys and it's really helpful i think that kind of goes a long way yeah i think a lot of people don't even know the trails there i know at first the Mike, I think you got a report from the, the police that we're, we're not sure what people were actually doing when they saw bikes coming down yeah. that one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of times people may or may not know. Um, one of the big supporting um, groups currently is the uh, NICA team from Middleton, Mount Corb, and Wanakee. Um, they are a youth mountain bike team associated with, affiliated with the schools in those uh, districts and I think there's somewhere around 
hundred kids total out of those um, three schools that they travel around and they'll ride here, Middleton's, um, Flat Hawk, as well as Blue Mounds. Um, so that's another big supporting factor that um, those folks are looking for more, more places to ride a little bit because they do bring quite a few kids. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's just a huge growing uh, sport. I know at one time they were in the park off yeah. of Bourbon and that was, it was packed. a huge um, event that they had just to just to practice there in the park. Yeah, so they were at Glacial Valley Park. That's kind of like where they met. It was like their meeting hub. And then they all went out onto the trail in groups, like different group members. And there had to have been, I mean, there were a hundred plus bikes there or hundred plus. There's a lot of kids. Um, and now it's just one of the nights that they came out here. I know that there were other nights that they came. Yeah, as well, they, so. they have sixth through 12th grade. Um, and it's an inclusive sport that you don't have to compete, but they do have races. So they're really um, just trying to get kids doing something now. I think by for all intents and purposes, they are succeeding, and there's a lot of kids involved in that. Um, it's kind of probably pushing other sports to, to not have as many participants because there are so many kids, and you can do it as an individual. You don't need to be a part of a team necessarily, even though it is a team. team. How come our schools don't do that? They do. Oh, yeah, they're, they're involved. Yeah, Middleton, uh, like Glacier Astros. Creek does. Um, they definitely can be, yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. And I think that's where, was it Sime? Krista, Katie. Krista? Katie. Oh, Katie's Katie. a kid. Chris is a mom. Krista. Krista yeah. was a coach, I think. or yeah. she, she was the one that always contacted us to ask about where they could park or where they could where we they could meet to begin with. So Cool. Um, I have a related yet unrelated question. Is there a neighborhood park planned for that new development? So once we get to 50%, which we're getting closer... Um, that's our that's our kick in moment where okay. we send out letters to all the neighbors and say, hey, come on out. We're going to talk about planning your playground. And there's a there's a spot allocated for that. Yeah. So that's actually further over here. So okay. um, the park itself is right here. OK, so there's two point two acres, I believe. So get it. Two point two five acres total uh, that we'll plan. Uh, the build out here in the next year so parking location there so so we do have curb cut uh in right here so it, it comes right off and this could be a parking lot but if it would it probably be like 10 stalls or something you know at most um you know we just did that kind of on a whim thinking maybe it could happen but we didn't have to do it later uh, and there's kind of a ditch area right here that's where we had them bring the storm water across the road so it kind of fit perfect, it's, you know, otherwise you'd end up having like, you know, 20 feet or so on the other side of that ditch that wouldn't be utilized. So we thought that could be a good spot for a good usage. The problem with the playground or building out these parks is that until all of the lots are, you know, the basements are dug or they've taken out a permit, we don't get their funding. So it's really hard to plan and put a park in play unless you do it all in phases when once you get all the money, which may end up being what we have to do. But, you know, I'm hoping that there's a big push, at least for phase two. And if phase two gets built out, we could have a decent amount of funds, you know, to be able to build at least the playground mm -hmm. and or trails through there. I actually thought both of those would fill up faster. Cedar Valley and Creek Crossing. Yeah. Phase two is actually going pretty it, quick out there if you haven't been. Yeah. Because I think we miss out on an opportunity if the parks don't get in. I think particularly in my neighborhood, you know, it, there was a lot of people that we just didn't know. Right. And the park is what brings people together with kids and then yeah. helps adults meet each other. And I think is is good for the community. So it, for me, I thought it was a shame that it was all done. And then it just came in kind of last minute. To, yeah. I personally, I would love to make it so that, and I've talked to Brian, I think I talked to Bill prior to this, the administrator, how we change our ordinance, that as soon as a subdivision goes in, they put the park in first. Yeah. So if they were to have, you know, because they're already there, they're building out roads, they're doing other things. They could easily have at least built out even 50% of the park, right? But do all the playground, put everything in so that it, I, in my opinion, I think it makes people want to live there then, you know, it kind of, oh, just one more reason. 
one more reason to do that. That's what Wanaki kind of does it that way. They're the only one I know in the area that does, but so once the construction is done know. on the roads and infrastructure, right. start putting it up. Yeah. And they could easily bring their concept plans just like we do now, right? Like I have to bring them back to you. This is what it's going to look like. They could do all of that within a master plan of the park and then just give them the okay to go. So and that kind of goes along with even like mountain biking. Like we could have had them put in trails or do other so things. That was, there. That was actually one of my questions. So it's a, it's kind of like a two part mm -hmm. uh, memorandum. Quest. Yeah. Like, obviously I think we're all in, like say we're in favor of going forward. We just have to see what the financial is. Would you guys start building trail like your volunteer group? Would you start building out trails like as soon as possible or do you need like village action fundraising like um to build to build the mileage depends how motivated a few of us are okay <laughs> um fall is a great time so yes. you know you know if we get approval by then yeah we probably get i mean these are really exciting times to go for people like me that like to build trails and like to be on nature you go out and walk and you say well where's a cool spot to put this where does it make sense and where can we you know design how this is going to ride and then flow um you know can we do that quickly yeah we can um i think there's people that are definitely motivated to do that we have you know a pretty good sized group um, <clears throat> like i mentioned earlier nika is always gives us about a day or two a year that they'll do a trail day and they'll bring 20 or 30 kids and their parents out and we'll do a trail day with them. Um, they're not, they're not getting a ton done, but they're the, they're the next, they're the next group. Um, and they're yeah. learning, um, and they're being out there and they're, and they're giving back, um, which I, I think is important definitely to, to do that. So, you know, we always have, uh, volunteers and, and, you know, we are capable of, um, our club, has an executive or did have an executive director. Um, so, you know, we're always looking to raise more funds through that as well. Um, I don't know if you know Lori. She, did? She you know, put it her notice. So uh -huh. the club is currently looking for a new executive director part-time um, as a paid position. So um, they are trying to get, gain more funding through having, you know, paid staff as well. This is uh, pretty groundbreaking in the area for us to have as a club to have paid staff member um so the more we can do that the, the quicker we can move on getting things built but yeah i think definitely volunteer group you know we could probably start as early as normal hmm. with with approvals does any of this have to go to the board mm -hmm. um i had two quick things uh, can we create a policy or a memorandum within our committee to ask for this stuff, like parks and things to be done up front? Is that something we can come up with? Or and, with? I think and that push could that to then the be, board of yeah. saying we think that this I is... I think what would be ideal is maybe the next meeting that we have, which will be in July, by the way. Uh, the next meeting we have, we could have it as one of the topics. We could do some research beforehand and say this is what we should be changing our land division to. Um, which I've already kind of given them, but I think it'd be good for you guys to be a part of that process if you could. Yeah. I mean, cause if we all weigh in and say, Hey, we think this is worthwhile and then he can yeah. bring it up to the board. I think right. you could actually maybe get somewhere, make some changes. I don't know yeah. why the board wouldn't say like, Hey, we, yeah, I think they would too. It's just never really been brought up. Poop the bed down here at this one. Yeah. We want to make sure it doesn't happen again. I think you'd get more for your money too, because if you get it five years earlier, now you got more oh, sure. equipment for the money right now five years later that price goes up yeah absolutely less for your money i'd agree um one question for you can you just describe basically what it takes to build the trail i mean um, are you just uh, does, i mean yeah. people just ride around you just yeah. walk around with a bunch of shovels and no. move stuff over or <laughs> um so the Sucks. first part is really planning you know where can we physically put a trail in um what features do we want to include um water management um so we'll typically walk walk the property, um, look for places we want to go and, and what we think would be a interesting trail. Um, the next step is understanding where our property lines are. Um, most of these properties aren't straight lines or they're pretty jagged. So understanding that was really key. Um, there was a local resident who did the surveying previously for his, his work. Um, he's also a mountain biker, so he helped us 
with the last one. Um, so really understand where the property lines are. Um, then, so we'll flag it with flagging material. Um, we'd have Mike come out and he approves, you know, the general layout of, of said trail. Um, <clears throat> we've used, you know, shovels. We've used mini excavators um, to move material to, to build a trail so that it's actually flattish. I mean, it's still not bike trail. Um, the mini excavator can get in a lot of places and move a lot of material that it would take 15 guys a lot of time. Um, so we really try to utilize that. A lot of uh, professionals or semi-professionals have, have worked on these um, and, and taught classes and, you know, got people up to speed, myself included, to, to operate these. Um, moving, moving the material. Um, and then what we do is we come back with um, hand, hand labor, so to speak, um, raking, um, tamping it down. Sometimes we'll use even um, compactors, like you guys were talking about earlier. We actually use a compactor to compact the dirt down so that just makes it a harder surface and it stays better, I guess. It doesn't, uh, it's not going to erode as quickly. You're not way. getting ruts and things. Yeah. Um, so we'll really want to tamp things down um, and, and, and trimming the brush back, obviously. Um, the great thing about the mini excavator is a lot of the brush on those hillsides is honeysuckle and buckthorn, and that thing can just pull that stuff out. And we try to stack it up for um, the department to, you know, if they have time to burn or um, flat habitat, because that's a lot of times what's happening. There's a lot of rabbits and things that are living in these in these brush piles. So um, that's really the the main the main steps that are involved. I like burning piles. Jed would also like to know burning. where you sign up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. And, and, you know, um, sorry. He's uh, volunteering me. Oh, gotcha. Uh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. That's good. Sorry. Go ahead, Jed. Um, I was going to ask, uh, who maintains the trails? Yeah, so that's the best part. And that's why I said I really enjoy working with this <laughs> team. Um, I would say in general... 95% of the trail itself is maintained by the volunteers. And so when you, I, when I introduced Ron as the assistant steward, land steward of the cross plains trail, mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of the main guy to bring all these volunteers together and, uh, have them come out and work on different areas of the trail that have, you know, are having issues or trees are down, or we currently have a tree down. It's been can, down now. Speak for, to that, Mike. Yeah, go ahead, Ron. So, uh, Mike was trying to get us uh, someone to cut a tree down that kind of came across the trail and it was kind of dangerous and it had been rotting out about 20 feet from the trail and it had fallen over the trail and actually in two two spots. Um, we were able to clear it enough to get people to be able to at least get through, um, whether walking or biking. Um, but I made, made a call out to the club and we have a number of people that are certified chainsaw operators. Um, whether it's state parks or county parks, and um, a gentleman that is the trail steward at Blue Mountain State Park uh, actually came out and took care of it the other day. Um, his saw broke down, <laughs> um, but he's going to come back, I think, tomorrow to clean up the rest of it, that he got it off the, the main dangerous part off the trail, and he's like, I'm going to take, I'll come out and take care of the rest of it. So um, it's actually yeah. taken care of. <laughs> nice. That's great. Yeah. So, so Dane and I had planned to to get it out. We went up there one day, and neither of us felt very comfortable about you know cutting this tr that that tree down, as it was kind of hung up into another dead tree. And you know, normally what we do is cut that dead tree down first, but then there was you know another five or six of them around, living trees around that we were like ah, it was it was just like it was kind of nerve wracking. So, but the. You know, Ice Age, that's why I said the Ice Age is great. They usually have a lot of volunteers, but I would I'd give my hats to all these mountain biking uh, volunteers so far as they've been just great to work with and not add a lot of a lot of work to us. So we have a lot of other trails, um, foot trails throughout the village that we do clean and or clear. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't get probably half of the traffic that the mountain biking and or Ice Age are getting, but we do have them. So it's great when we have other volunteers to be able to work in the areas that they're passionate about. What do you need from us in terms of action here? I think approval of the conceptual idea. 
Um, obviously funding and or trailhead discussion can be, you know, something that Ron can bring up to the board as well and kind of see where that goes. Um, I think the conservancy funding that's set aside from each home, there's about $859 or um, that's set aside. I think that'd be a great, you know, starting point. Use of it. Um, use of that funds, uh, of those funds. So, you know, and that's kind of why I pushed for us to get this land or get conservancy land because I thought we could have some funding available right there. So do you know where this is going to go to the board agenda? Would it be next month? I don't because, yeah, right now I'm guessing it, it'll probably be Ju the June meeting. Yeah, because you don't have one anymore in May. No. Nope. Yeah. So I, I would just say if you can, when this does hit the board agenda, I'm assuming you're going to come and present it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we would bring um, some people to speak in favor of it from the club and, okay. and local folks. Uh, that's what we did yeah, and last time. And from your standpoint, is there anything more that you feel the board should have, right? Like, is there any more documentation? You talked about economic impact. That might be something that's good, Ron. Um, but is there anything else that, like, would have helped you make it, this decision tonight or I, not make this I decision? I would say, like, the lack of uh, complaints or problems okay. that it's had. You know, because you know, the other one went in, oh, we're going to have people biking all over. Like, it's been relatively, it's been problem free. So I don't know why you can't, couldn't expand off that, try and shoot sure. out an argument. Yeah, I think that the one thing that I got, um, you know, even from Jay, but from the board in general, is that the, they really want the village to be known for its outdoor recreation. And I think this obviously, this is what outdoor recreation is. Right? And they're, they're, well, and for me, that, well, I think that was one of the questions I had earlier. You talked about the pavilion and the bike tools. I mean, is it, would it be feasible to put bike tools, you know, if they're all parking at Main Street? I mean, I think that's one of the questions is everybody's like, well, if they're just coming here to ride bikes and they're not spending any money, they're just over riding bikes. But if they're all parking over here, if we had the tools there and had something that sort of attracts them into the main part of town, would that be beneficial and help? So I spoke with Jay at the, at the open house meeting that we had at the village uh, fire station. And his big thing is he wants to do something like that by the new. Village Hall. The, the Village Hall, because um, I think he was talking about a pavilion as well over there. So I think kind of that whole area, the parking areas are on the other side of the train tracks, and then the Village Hall will be there, but there's kind of that whole kind of hub area, the, the line shelter will be there, and you have the, the paved boardwalk, um, and you know, obviously moving towards the west, towards the other trails. Because eventually the park, they couldn't advertise parking at the Village Hall if they're putting in that and, parking right? and bathrooms and everything right. that he's yeah. talking about. Mike, yeah. Mike, do you yeah. remember there used to be a coffee bike shop on Bourbon? Do you remember that? What's place? that? Remember the we used to grind. Bike oh yeah, up, right uphill grind. Yes, totally. Yeah, at least, so the wrong least, time. New time, maybe right so, time. Yeah, Lee Sorensen's son, I think, or son-in-law used to run that. Oh, wow. But yeah, I think that... I think like adding more bikes and stuff out here, you may see something like that pop up again, right? Like yeah, as a business yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I'd make a motion that we accept the conceptual plan for the expansion of the bike optimized multi-use trails. I will second. Right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you for your time and your passion about this. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks Ron. Ron. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ron. So I'll be in touch with you, kind of level this thing out, okay. put some more stuff into it, and then uh, yeah. we'll get it into the packet for the June meeting. So it'd be the June 24th, maybe. Or I make a motion to adjourn. Yes. Motion. That was your motion. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. We're trying to make this top. Instead of, so, and then start recording it. So, first, we're meeting adjourned.